Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. All right. Well, I had, I had someone uh, at the 8 a.m. bring me an apple. They brought their teacher an apple. I'm like, you're just so cool. I love it. I'm going to save it for later. Um, how many know that everything that we will struggle with as students of God, and we've been talking about what's a student look like scripturally? Well, Jesus got disciples, and disciples are students. Students are learners. And hopefully every time you come to church, every time you open your Bible, every time you seek God, hopefully that is a moment where you're growing as a student of God, as a disciple of God. But I want to be very clear with you about something. Everything that we're going to struggle with in this life as students of God, as disciples of God, there are things that are going to keep us from reading our Bible, things that are going to keep us from praying, things that are going to keep us from being kind, things that are going to keep us from forgiving. There will be things and struggles that will keep us from trusting God, having faith in God. There will be things that will keep us from praising God. You know, there's seasons in our life where we're going through something and there's times where we'll give God everything when life is high, right? The bills are being paid. Work is going awesome, right? Family's doing good. So why not give them a praise for that? But the test is when all hell's breaking loose, when your health is not the greatest, when your job is not doing so good, but you still have the capacity to give God a big shot of praise. That's the real test of a student. It's when the test comes. But life is going to throw struggle at us that's going to keep us from all kinds of things, even being generous, being givers, and, and being courageous to step out. And, 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 and not just courageous to, to do stuff, but having the courage to grow. It takes courage to grow as a follower of Christ. It takes courage to make a decision. If you were here the second week, we talked about decisions. It takes courage to make a decision. Not just any decision, it takes courage to make the right decision. It doesn't take any courage to make the wrong decision, but it takes a lot of conviction and courage to make a God decision in our everyday life. And so there are, <clears throat> there are three simple things that all of us are going to be tempted with. And if, if it was something that Jesus dealt with, then it's definitely something that we're going to be dealt with as well but how many know that Jesus has overcome every single temptation that we can face on this earth now let's look at a first verse here because I'm gonna lay a little foundation of where I want to go today we're gonna up the ante of our growth first John 2 16 says this for all that is in the world everything that's in the world he says this the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. And so when you start looking at these three things, these were the three things that Jesus was constantly tempted with, yet was without sin. He was tempted in every way. So just think about anything that you're being tempted. What, 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 what issues in the flesh are you dealing with? What lust of the eyes are you being challenged with? What pride of life issue do you have right now? And when you look at this, I'll just break each one down. For me, lust of the flesh is, is when you say things like this. It's what I feel like doing what I'm going to do. It's what I feel like doing. It's not what you want. It's what I feel like doing. The lust of the eyes says it's what I see on the surface, but don't look into what really is. It's the person that has their own perception. Right? They look at a, sit, at a circumstance, a situation. They look at a challenge maybe relationally, but they can only see their point of view, but they won't really look into it, dive into it, ask questions, and try to really get the whole story. That's the lust of the, the eyes. And then there's the part of life. The part of life says, you know, it's the person that says, uh, I don't need God, and I don't need anybody to tell me how to live my life. You know some people like that? You know what? You don't have to be far away from God to have that attitude. I think sometimes there's Christians that think, I don't need God. When you take God out of your mission, when you take God out of your purpose, you already think you don't need God. No, we need God. Jesus said it this way. He said, and without him, I can do nothing. If Jesus can't do nothing without God, 
who do we think we are to think that we can do anything in life, in marriage, in parenting, in careers, in calling? What makes us think? When did we think that without God, we got this? When did we think that thought? I'll tell you how, when the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life came into our life. And we all have seasons of that, don't we? Let me see all my prideful people. Just lift your hand. No, don't lift your hand. Put your hand down. <laughs> and so this is something. But, but one thing I, I love about God is that when you think about school, and if you haven't been here for the last two weekends, then go watch live stream, catch up. But um, I love the fact that God has empowered us to overcome those three areas of our life. And mind you, those are the three, only three, that we're all going to be tested with, all of us, every single person in this room. But Jesus said, I've conquered every sin, every work of the devil. He said, I conquered it in order for you to be a great student. In other words, God set us up for great success. Aren't you glad that we have a God who sets us up as believers to have good success, right? And I do want to say this, because I think sometimes when you go to church and you're listening to messages, I think you, you kind of, you kind of feel a little bit of condemnation, shame, and it's not that I'm, sh I'm, I'm sharing anything that's making you feel that way. I think that's where the devil trips you up, and they'll start making you feel guilty, shameful, condemned. That, that's the devil. That's not God. God doesn't do that. God convicts. God will confront your heart. God will confront your thought life. God will confront whatever it is that you're dealing with, but he'll do it in such a way where he's wanting to confront you or bring conviction to you that brings change, and that change brings all kinds of wonderful blessings, but uh, he sets us up for our school of life for success. Look at your neighbor and say, how's your GPA? You guys remember GPA? Yeah? Remember, you need a, you need a good GPA to get into some, 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 you know, Ivy League schools, right, some universities. You got to have a good GPA. Let me give you a quick definition of GPA because it all ties into the message. A great point average which is typically calculated by adding all the numbered grades you've received and dividing them by the number of credits you've taken. Here's, it's this simple. This is how the school held every single student accountable. And so, and I, I honestly, I have my own opinions, my opinion, I didn't say, let's say it the Lord, but, <laughs> so don't write me no emails or letters, but I honestly think that there's certain things in school that's pretty stupid, like things that, like, subjects that just doesn't make any natural sense. Honestly, it just makes no sense. I don't even know how it applies. But regardless, they have a system. They have a standard. They have a GPA. They have all these things that uh, determines what type of student you are. It literally defines you uh, as a student of, of education. But one thing that I have learned with God is I am so glad that God will not hold me accountable on things that he never called me to do. Aren't you glad? Like, like the school will hold you accountable, right, to a, a grade level, but I have a God that will not hold me accountable for what he didn't give me to do. And what I mean by that is sometimes, you know what, as, as, as people, you know what, we're, we're always looking at someone else who is doing things so much better than we are, right? You're looking at someone who's maybe making a little bit more money than you. You may be looking at someone who maybe has a higher position than you. And you know what? Kind of like low profile. You know, like when we really think about pride. Like if I were to ask, you know, the church today, like, is there anyone here dealing with pride? I think most people would not even lift their hand. But you know what? There's this kind of like this underlying, undercover kind of pride that goes on. Like have you ever seen someone that's always like taking selfies with like, their food at this expensive restaurant or, you know, you know, uh, they get a brand new car and that's cool. I, 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 there's nothing wrong with that. Brand new car is like, oh, you know, hashtag blessed, you know, and, uh, <laughs> right. Uh, you know, uh, in Hawaii, uh, God's so good, right? Hashtag whatever. Hashtag all, but let me just tell you, is, you know, what? I wish they would just put hashtag humble brag, right? <laughs> Because it, it, it does, it kind of turns into a little bit of pride because we're trying to just kind of like, you know, throw out there everything we have, everything we're doing, everything we're eating. God bless you. Uh, but but we, all, we all deal with this. But when you think about thanking God that, he, that he, he's not going to hold me accountable 
for what he never gave me to do is so refreshing because when you're a student in school, you feel the pressure of having to be the best of the best of the best. But you look at the story of Jesus and his disciples. He's sitting and he's having class with his disciples. So the teacher's sitting. We know Jesus was called a teacher, right? And he's sitting there and he's talking to his disciples and he starts giving them a story of the talents found in Matthew chapter 25. And he starts talking to them about talents and a master and he says there was this master and this master looked at his servants and he said and to one servant he gave him five talents that you feel good today and the other one he gave two talents and the other one he gave one talent and you know it it's kind of cool like okay where are you going with this God what's going on Jesus okay what's that have to do with me Notice this, if you really study the scripture, it says that Jesus, as he shared this story about this master who gave each one talents, it doesn't say that the master made the choice of what he would give them. It says that the master gave them talents according to their ability. He gave it to them according to what I've created. See, there are certain giftings in me that some of you may not have. Just like there are certain giftings in you that I don't have. And that's just, but, and that goes vice versa all throughout the room, everywhere in this world. And so Jesus is telling them, it's, it's not a matter of the master choosing how many talents. No, it's a matter of the master saying, I'm going to give you according to your ability. And I know that, like, for example, when I preach on, let's say, on a Sunday, you know, I always feel like I get graded by the church. And that's okay. That's people. That's culture today, right? We just, we're, we're all haters, right? How was that movie? That sucked. We grade everything in life. That's okay. But sometimes, you know what I feel like, man, I'll leave on a Sunday. I'm like, man, that was like straight up two-level preacher. Like, praise God. Like, why can't I be like that level five right now? You know, and we all have those moments. But here's the deal. The way I see it is like, okay, if I'm a level two preacher, okay, the two-talent preacher, then, man, you better be the best two-talent preacher there is in the city of Santa Clarita. Amen? You want the five-level preacher to look at you and be like, man, that's a good two. That's why, you know, I have so many wonderful pastor friends. And, uh, you know, one of them that I really respect, and I respect all the pastors in our community, and I love the fact that we have relationship, but like Pastor Rusty from Real Life, you know, he sat in the service a few times. I've gone to his church service as well and sat under his teaching. We've kind of just kind of, you know, Go sit down and listen to each other. And uh, one thing he said to me, he's like, he's like, man, you're running this church. Like, you're a 10,000-member church, man. Your excellence, your volunteers, just how, how you guys run things, the order, you know, the organization. is like, man, you know, that tells you that, man, we are being the best two that we can be with what we have, right? And, and so forth. But let's say you're a one talent. Let me see all my ones. Yeah, no one, no, one, no one really wants to raise their hand, right? It's a one. Who wants to be a one? But still, Jesus said there's the one, there's the guy that was given one talent according to his ability. And you may be like, well, man, I don't want to be a one business owner. I don't want to be a one career or uh, uh, employee of a, uh, of a company. I don't want to be a one, you know, husband or wife. I don't want to be a one parent. You know, I, I, I want to be more than that. But, but the reality is this, is that it's not a matter of being uh, a one and doing nothing with it. But as Jesus kept talking about each person's talent, he talked about the one. He didn't talk much about the five or the two because they multiplied their number, right? The guy with the five multiplied it to what? Five more. The guy with the two multiplied it to what? Two more. The guy with the one multiplied it to what and what did the servant or what did the master say about the servant you wicked and lazy servant why did he call him that what did he do with that one he buried it he buried it he buried what God called to grow he buried what God called to multiply and so often 
as believers, as Christians, you can come to church, you can receive Christ, man, you can have an encounter with God, you can have this incredible moment with God, but it's so easy to stay at the one and sometimes even bury your Christianity that the only person that knows they're saved is you and everyone around you doesn't even know that you're a Christian. And so we bury this bad boy. But the master said, you wicked and you lazy servant. Why did he call him that? Because God desires for each and every single one of us to grow in this walk with God. Hopefully also in your workplace. Hopefully you're growing as an employee. Maybe you're an employer, a business owner. Hopefully you're, you're growing as an employer. You know, maybe you're in the, some form of industry, whether you're in politics, whether you're in the movie industry, whether you're in the, you know, music and whatever, but hopefully you're growing. But I can tell you this much. What's really cool is this, is that we all have one thing in common. And the one thing that we all have in common is that we all have the ability to grow the ability that God has given us. All of us, we all have the ability to grow the ability that we have been given. That means that if you're a one, that's not a bad thing. You can grow to a number two, and then from a number two, you can keep. So we all have this ability to keep growing our ability just because you're a five or just because you're a two or just because you're a one doesn't mean I have to just live there the rest of my life. No, God's saying, hey, listen, you have the ability to grow your ability. And I'm trying to challenge us to have this mindset to say, okay, you know what? Right now, maybe I am a two preacher or maybe I am a two church, but I have the ability to be a five. I have the ability, and that goes for any area of your life, whether it's in marriage, whether it's in parenting, whether it's in your career, whether it's in your business. But here's the deal. The scripture said the master did not choose what abilities he gave them. He said the master gave them the uh, abilities according to their ability. It's according to your ability. And so right now, maybe you've been walking with God, whether it's been one year or five years or 10 years. I wonder what your ability looks like right now. Have you multiplied it? Have you grown it? Have you stretched it? Tell someone, you can grow. Come on, you can read a book, right? You can find a mentor, right? We all have the ability to keep growing, but we have to do our part. We have to do our part. It's kind of like, I remember back in school, you know what, I've been saying this for, this is my third weekend, like, man, I sucked as a student. I was not a good student. I was a bad boy. I was just not good. I went to six high schools. And that wasn't because I was academically challenged, you know, where, you know, where I needed something. No, it was just, it was bad. But I remember, I, I was always nice to the smart people, because I would copy off them. <laughs> and they were always, like, really good friends, like, and I protected them. I was, like, their, you know, their, their bouncer, their whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Their bodyguard, whatever. Yeah, they just, you know, if you were smart, you're protected. It's just the way it worked. But I would look at these smart people, and, I mean, they just, amazing at every subject. And you're just like, what the, like, sometimes, I mean, sometimes you, I don't know about you, but I would think like, wow, like, like, man, my parents produced dumb kids, you know? Like, you just start thinking, so like, like, how, because we, we often think that people are just born that way. They're born leaders. No, there's no such thing as born leaders. There's no such thing as born anything. There's, there's, there's what you're willing to develop, what you're willing to grow. And so, you know, it, it, it would be funny because you would look at it, and it's like, you know, they ace this and they ace that. And, and it's like they, everything they, they're, they're given, it's just they just shine. It's like, wow. I mean, they blow their nose. Their snot is just so smart. You know what I'm saying? You're just like, how does, like, how does that? And you just start thinking, I'll take it a step further. Or you get a kid named Pepe <laughs> who hardly speaks English or Wong. Okay. I would have a Pepe or a Wong in my school. And man, listen, they're, they're international students. I'm born in the United States of America. And, and you know what? They would read these word problems like, okay, if Sarah was walking to school on a snowy day, how many more steps 
what Sarah needed. It's like, I don't give her. But they would just understand. I could never understand word problems. I could never, I, I, anybody ever suck at word problems? Like, you'd read it. It's like, who cares, right? Like, I, I don't. Yeah, as long as Sarah went to school, that's all that matters, you know? So, but then you would have Pepe and Wong who barely speak any English and they would be brilliant. They're like, oh, of course. It's like, oh, and you just sit there and you wonder, my God, were these people born this way? Or like, mom, what is you and dad? What's your DNA? Like, what the, what, like, what happened to me? And, 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 I, and I share this, why? Because so many times we can look at other people's lives and we see the glamour or we see the blessing. Right? We see the fruit. We see the growth. We see their marriage. We see their children. And we're like, man, why can't you be like that? You know, you know? And we start comparing our, our life. We start comparing our, our gift. We start comparing our talent with, with other people's grind, with other people's hard work. With other, see, everybody looks at the student who's getting the A's, but nobody saw Pepe or Wong during the week opening the textbook, studying every single night, getting around the right community and saying, hey, how about this? We'll just test each other. We'll go back and forth, sitting together at a coffee shop, at a McDonald's, whatever. And they just sit and they just start studying together because they want to get better at what they're doing in life. That's what God wants for us. And so why do you share all that? I share this because when I say that God has set us all up for success, he set us up for success. Look at Ephesians on the scriptures here. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. He said this. He said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has what? Blessed us with some spiritual blessing. In, no, no, right? With what? Every. That means that there's nothing that you lack with God. Nothing. Like God has equipped every single one of us. God has given us an open book test. God has given us his holy Bible that has the answers to every single challenge you face. Not just challenges. It also has so much wisdom on how to be a married person, on how to be a single person, on how to have a successful business, on how to be amazing parents. Everything that pertains to life, God has given it to you and I. But I love this scripture because it says, he says that he has blessed us. I don't know about you, but blessing means free 99. I've never heard of a blessing that cost me something. The only blessings I get when someone, like, let's say my birthday, let's say my wife gives me a gift, like, man, what a blessing. Thank you so much. It didn't cost me anything. It's amazing how God gives us a free education but we won't take it. He gives you a free ride and we push back. He gives us all the answers and it's still not good enough. He's blessed us with every spiritual gift that comes from heavenly places. Notice it and say, he gave you every spiritual blessing that comes from the earth. No, God's saying, I have given you the capacity to tap into heaven. I have given you the capacity to tap into heaven's giftings, heaven's talents god but but how do we tap into that i'm glad you asked we're going to talk about that like how do i how do i get heavenly blessings not not earthly heavenly heavenly that means that right now let's let's say your life is good right now it's really good well it can get gooder <laughs> oh pastor that's good i already i already did good gooder my life is great okay we can get greater i am greater then let's get greatest we keep, listen, we keep saying, and it's not, let me be great, pride, great, I will have. have. No, it's let me, let me be so blessed to be a blessing. Yeah, like where I can actually help other people. Yeah, not, not just help them like here, uh, buy your groceries. No, no, no. Like instead of just giving people a fish, how about give them a fishing pole? Teach them how to be a better business owner. Teach them how to be a better married person. Teach them how to be a better parent. Like not just give them fish, not just give you a prayer, which I love praying, okay, love that. But my thing is like, but how do I help you grow? How do I help you get better? See, that's called discipleship, right, where we help other people get better. Why? Because I'm blessed. I'm ble Are you getting this? Okay, good. Can we keep talking? 
Okay. And uh, where did I leave off at? Okay, so here's, here's, let's go back to the student. So here's what happens. We can be so memorized or mesmerized by people's intelligence. We can be so mesmerized by, by people's abilities. And you can be so mesmerized for the rest of your life of how amazing other people are and, and never or underestimate the potential, the gift, the talent that God has blessed you with because you're too caught up being mesmerized by someone else's blessing when God has blessed you with every spiritual gift that comes from above, but according to your ability. According to your ability. Got to step up our GPA. Come on, we all have the same, the same Savior. When you went to school, you had the... Same teaching staff, same curriculums, right? If you're really good, maybe you'd be in uh, advanced classes. But we got the same Savior, the same Bible. We got the same Holy Spirit. We got the same every. I mean, so what's the difference? Commitment, <laughs> dedication, hard work, right? Desire, that's what makes the difference. And when you think about this, you think, okay, if we have the same God, the same Savior, the same Holy Spirit, the same Bible, then, then why is it that there are some Christians that are just so spiritually blessed and then there are other Christians that are so spiritually flunking? It's just what you're willing to put in is what you get out. Amen. It's just a reality. If you're, if you're wanting to get something better for your life, then, then you have to put in the work. And I know I'm, I'm going practical and spiritual, guys, because we need to get this. We need to, we need to elevate. We need to grow. And uh, we got to take our GPA to the next level. Let me give you the acronym for GPA. Here's my acronym. Kind of like I'll show you NFL later. GPA means everybody say, get it. Get it. Practice it. Then advance it. See, that's what God wants to do with us. God wants us to elevate our GPA. So, but first, we got to get it. Get what? I'm going to tell you. Chill. <laughs> then what? Then we got to practice it. Practice what? What you get. Then I have to advance it. That means that we get better at everything we do. You know what I'm saying? And so... Let's take CJ. CJ is a clothes designer. He designs clothes and does all kinds of stuff. But I remember when he first started his clothing company. And as I've seen his line, it just keeps getting better. I'm like, okay. This dude, he got it. He practiced it. And he's advancing it. And that's what we have to do in everything we do. But I'm talking about your spiritual walk. What does that look like? Come on, did you get it? Are you practicing it? And are you advancing it? That's what God wants to do. Now, how do I do that? Well, obviously, when we talk about GPA, GPA represents as a student in school or as a student of God. It represents who I am consistently, right? It means that there's an average of what I am constantly doing in my followership with Jesus Christ. And I, love, I understand the fact that all of us here are Christians, or most of us here, probably maybe like 85, 90% of us are Christians maybe, and there's maybe that few percent that, that, that's not, but that's okay, you're here, that's awesome, I love it, but check this out, when you get God, God is an equal opportunist, and so never underestimate the opportunity God gives you for advancement. He's, he's an equal opportunist, it's just a matter of what you're willing to put in, and so, um, Look at John 14, 25, because we say get it, right? Get it. Let's start with get it. Here we go. John 14, verse 25 and 27, it says this. He says, this is Jesus again talking to his disciples. He says, I have told you these things while I'm still with you. But the helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby, the Holy Spirit. Everybody say the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. That's what we need to get. Now, a lot of us know there's a Holy Spirit, but a lot of us don't know him personally. And I, and I know that because I, I think that we'd be a lot further, I think, whether it's individually or a family or corporate family, 
a lot further sometimes, but we, we tend to forget. And so he says here, uh, Jesus says, hey, listen, I have to go now, but I'm graduating you. I'm giving you my Holy Spirit. Think about that. I'm giving you my Holy Spirit. He says, who is the helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, the strengthener, the standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you what? All things. And he will help you what? Remember, everything I have told you, peace I leave with you, my perfect peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Look at all this getting we have to get. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance. Come on. You deal with anxiety? Link up with the Holy Spirit. Huh? He says he will calm you in every circumstance and give you courage, and he'll give you strength for every challenge so we need to get the holy spirit back in our everyday life in order for us to be successful in this walk with god come on for us to be successful in everything we put our hands to everything to live a godly life that's why we need the holy spirit he's holy spirit right he's the only one that can bring purity back in our life he's the only one who brings conviction. The Bible also says this. It says, and the Holy Spirit will lead you into all what? Truth. So if you're dealing with lies, like I'm not good enough, I'm stupid, I'm dumb, I'm not, I'm, I'm not smart. You start thinking all these things that I'm sure many of us have thought of. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit will purify those thoughts and say, nope, that's not who you are. That's what you think, but it's not who you are. And so the Holy Spirit starts challenging you. How does he challenge me? Well, let's just take this. Let's break it down. I won't do all of them, but let's just take the word helper. Jesus said, I'm leaving you a helper. Well, what does a helper do? Well, a help, helper will help you stay focused in school, right? God wants to keep you focused. A helper will help you stay motivated. Let me just hit that a little bit. It's so interesting. There's nothing worse than a Christian who is an emotional roller coaster Christian. What do I mean by that? Like, you have a season where you're just good, you're great, but then you just change. Why? Unless everyone's patting you on the back, you're not motivated. So, so instead of waiting for someone to come, like, oh, my God, you're so great, you know, and people crave it, and we should be great encouragers, okay? I, I'm a believer in that. But I think that when you are always constantly looking for the validation and the approval of man, you're going to be one disappointed, unhappy person for the rest of your life because you're just looking for man's approval when God already said, approved, right? Stop performing, right, before people. Stop going to, you know, um, what do you call those things, the auditions where you audition. We had somebody audition for our show that's coming in October. And I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm here to audition. That's, some of us are still auditioning before God, like, look what I can do. Look what I can do. And God's like, God's like, you look funny, man. Stop it. I've already chosen you. I, I picked you. I saved you. But we're just auditioning constantly. But, but, but listen, but the Holy Spirit will give you motivation, inspiration, innovation right? Aspiration. And I can keep going with the Asians, but, but you get the point. The Holy Spirit will do that. And so he'll help you with motivation. He'll help you stay motivated. He'll help you realize that you can accomplish that dream. You know what he also is? He's the counselor. You remember back in school, we had counselors. Y'all remember that? Okay. What did counselors do? They help you plan or guide you into your next season of what? University, college. They would tell you, okay, here's where you're at. Your GPA right now is 3.5. You want to go to USC? Okay, we're going to have to be like at about 4.0, right? And then we're going to have you take some AP classes and blah. And so what do they do? A counselor will counsel you, will help you plan and guide your future. Well, guess what? The Holy Spirit is the counselor. He not only counsels and helps us and guides us and helps us plan the things that God has already prepared for us for the future, but he will equip you. But here's the also cool part is that there is no counselor for your emotional life than the Holy Spirit. He is the perfect counselor. That's why he's called the comforter. 
He will comfort you. He'll bring you peace. And then the scripture also says he's a strengthener. What's a strengthener to me? Well, when you feel like quitting school, guess what? The Holy Spirit would be like, no, you ain't quitting, man. You didn't come this far to give up on church. You didn't come this far to give up on God. You didn't come this far to go ahead and throw in the towel. We didn't come this far to say that God has left you here. So the Holy Spirit will strengthen you to never give up. How about the standby? This is my favorite one. The standby is when people leave you, Holy Spirit always stands by. Right? When you feel alone, you're not. You have the standby. Right? When you feel like nobody believes in me, Yes, there is someone who believes in you, and he's the Holy Spirit, and he is your greatest cheerleader, and he is cheering you on saying, you got this. But my favorite one of all these is that the Holy Spirit is a tutor. You know, when my daughter, when she was in, uh, in, in university, I remember things got a little bit tough for her. Um, she was taking a bazillion uh, classes, and, and she got stuck in this subject, and she comes like, Dad, you know, man, I'm, I'm stuck on this thing right here. And I'm just like, I, I've, I've already tried. I've already talked to some friends. They're stuck too. And man, we're all stuck. I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, let's pay for a tutor, right? Let's find a tutor. Find the smartest person on the school and threaten their life. No, I'm just kidding. I said that. No. I said, let's, let's find a, a, a tutor. Let's find someone that can sit with you that's already, you know, been very proficient in this subject. And if we have to pay them, we'll pay whatever we have to you know what? Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit is the greatest tutor of your life. When you're stuck, sometimes you can be in, the, in this spiritual funk. Have you ever been there? Oh, yeah. Right? You're just like in this funk. But you know, you still love God. You still believe God. But no matter how many times you come into a worship setting like Elevate Church, and you're just like, oh, my God, it's my jam. But you're still funky, right? And, and, and you just like, you know, you, you come to church and you feel good while you're in service. You're like, man, okay, that's for me. But then you walk back out to your reality and then you default back to the, your issues, your problems, your, your challenges. You, you, know, you know the only one who can get you out of that stuck place is the Holy Spirit. Amen. He'll tutor you. Yeah. He'll teach you all things. He'll help you remember the things that you have studied for. Like, for example, I'm just going to throw a bunch of scriptures at you. He'll remind you of Galatians 6, 9, where he says, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. He'll remind you of 2 Corinthians 4. He'll say, not, he'll say uh, we are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. He'll remind you uh, once again of Psalms 34, 19. He'll say, and the righteous person may have many troubles but the Lord delivers him from them all he'll remind you of Proverbs chapter 3 which is one of my favorite verses verse 5 and 6 he'll say trust in the Lord with all your heart lean not in your own understanding in all your ways submit to him and that's a major cuss word in the church submit <laughs> yield to him submit to him and he will make your path straight another one of my favorite, Luke 137, for no word from God will ever fail. Man will fail me, God will never fail me. And, and, and that's why he's the greatest tutor. He's the greatest teacher. When you're in that low moment, because you have studied, because you have placed some word inside of your soul, your well, the Holy Spirit has something to draw from. But when you don't read your Bible, when you're not opening this book, when you're not putting in the hard work, when you're not studying, and you're expecting God to do something. God's like, wait a minute. Um, I've given you all the ability you need, but now you got to choose to do it. Yeah. Like, what do you want, the Holy Spirit to come and open the Bible for you? <laughs> He's the helper, not the doer, yeah. right? We want God to do things for us, but God's like, wait a minute, stop. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to help you grow. Here's what it looks like. This is what most Christians do. Don't worry, it's not the dare commercial. Remember this? This is your brain. There was like an egg on the frying pan. This is your brain. That's not, that's not what I'm doing. This is what it looks like for us. So we're just like this, doing it on our own, oh, trying to figure it out. Oh, and we're doing this five years, ten years. We're trying to, trying to, how you doing? Still trying to believe in God, you know. Still have my doubts. Uh, you know, hey, man, how, what's been going on with your family? Man, still can't stand her. And, and, and. And, and we go through life. How's work? It sucks. I hate it, man. I'm just so sick. And we can go year after year after year 
after a year until I close this thing and have have this this problem and and you know what and and yeah can you get a little bit better yeah but it's going to be a lot of pain or you can just say what the scripture says when Jesus said uh, in Ephesians or actually Paul said in Ephesians chapter uh, one when he said he said I have given you every spiritual gift that comes from above and it's found in in Christ, in Jesus, outside of Jesus, man, I don't know how people, you know, do life, honestly. But when we go in Christ, what happens? It just makes it so much easier. And you know what? We're spending that time in the Word. We're in prayer. Man, we're going to church. And, and all of a sudden, what was taking you forever, the Holy Spirit's like, hey, man, we could have done this a long time ago. Right? You took all that time trying to figure it out, trying to deal with it, trying to address it. Holy Spirit, like, I'm right here. That's what he says. Stand by. Stand by. Tag me in. This is where I come in. Right? And we're just, like, still talking about the problems. He's like, but if you're in me and I'm in you, then there's nothing that we can't do. Amen? I get the prayer pianist, whatever, whoever. Are they here? Let's look at this verse real quick. We're done. I'm giving you two more points and then we're out of here. Look at Acts chapter 4, verse 13. And I love this because when you look at this story in Acts chapter 4, we think about what God said. You know what? I've given you the ability to grow your ability, but the only way you grow your ability is by the Holy Spirit. He's the only one. We already established that. And the perfect example is these disciples. In verse 13, it says, And the members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training, uneducated, unschooled in the scriptures. But they also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. Here's, here's, here's what it looks like. When Jesus picked out his disciples, they were just some ordinary people, man, just people that go to work. People that have everyday jobs. As a matter of fact, there was nothing special about his disciples. If you look at Peter, Peter was a fisherman, right? You have Luke, Luke was a doctor. Back then, doctors weren't paid that much. You look at uh, all the disciples, tax collectors, carpenters, just ordinary folk, just regular people. But the Pharisees looked at them and they said, man, I'm, I'm looking at them. And man, we know these cats. They're not that smart, man. They're not that intelligent. They said it. We know they're uneducated. We know they're unschooled. And we know there's nothing special about them. But we can't can't deny there's something different about them they're drawing this they're drawing the people to this influence what influence it's the influence of the Holy Spirit that's what makes the difference there's you and then there's you who has the Holy Spirit activated I you know I get this all the time you know unfortunately we live in a world that stereotypes <laughs> And, uh, you know, I'll meet people. I go to conferences, and I'll be at leadership places. I speak at places. And, and, and you know, I always just be like, hey, my name's Mauricio. How you doing? What's your name? You know, it's, what's your name? Erica. Hey, very nice to meet you, Erica. And what do you do for a living? I'm like, oh, I, I'm, a pa- uh, uh, oh, I, 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 I'm a pastor of a church. Um, and I go, but prior to that, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like the whole, you ever had one of these? Uh, Omar, stand up. You know, have you ever had someone do this? Like when you walk around, they're like, yeah, yeah, ladies, you do that a lot to each other, but no, but I'm not but, like, but but but, but they, they size you up. Thank you, Omar. They they size you up right away. You know what I say? When people do that to you, when you walk in the room, they're just like, man, just do the catwalk, just like, you know, just, yeah, just do something, just just to try something. I don't know, ladies, you do that thing. I don't know, you know, just. But have you ever had just eyes on you, just like, and and you know what they're doing. 
they're just, they know, they're just like, they're already stereotyping. Am I being judgmental? No. You just, if you've been around it long enough, if you've experienced something long enough, you know what is and what is not. You know when you're accepted and you know when you're doubted and questioned. You just know it. Especially if you have the Holy Spirit because he'll give you discernment. And he'll tell you who's for you and who's against you. But we'll love people regardless of what they think. But I've been with, I've been in rooms with very, very much successful people. And, and so we talk about like a church. Oh, hey, church. And so they'll look at me straight up and be like, so where's your senior pastor? It's like, uh, which part of I pastor a church that you understand? <laughs> and no, it, uh, let me say it in Spanish. Yo soy el pastor de Elevate Church en la ciudad de New York. It, it's like, but, but they start sizing you up based on your color, based on maybe how you like people see me okay i just i'm pretty i'm pretty casual you know but but don't let casual fool you right because when you have the holy spirit the holy spirit will give you supernatural intelligence that people will be like how is it that you have the influence to connect with people like that how is it that you know how to draw business people how is it that you know how to draw entertainment people how is it that you know how to draw broken people that nobody how is it's because when you have the holy spirit the spirit of god is love and love covers a multitude of sins and love comes and changes the atmosphere and when you have the holy spirit let me tell you something people will look at you and they'll they'll look at you for the face value but once they start hearing you speak they'll be like oh there's something different about you you know what yeah you look unschooled yeah you look untrained yeah you look uneducated but but i cannot deny that god is in you David, perfect example. David was overlooked. David was underestimated, right? Before he ever killed Goliath, before he ever slayed his Goliath, what was he doing? He was an understudy of the Holy Spirit. What was the Holy Spirit doing with him? Well, while he was in the desert watching his dad's sheep, the Holy Spirit was dealing with his heart. Read your scripture. It says that David was filled with the Holy Spirit. And David... David was, and mind you, back in the Old Testament, Holy Spirit was temporary for temporary assignments. The New Testament church, the book of Acts church, you and I, we don't have temporary Holy Spirit. We have everyday Holy Spirit. Back then it was just for assignments. Now we have it all. And David, David was the understudy of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit taught him how to be a great leader. The Holy Spirit taught him how to be a great warrior. The Holy Spirit taught him how to be faithful, how to be committed. The Holy Spirit taught him how to love when no one was believing in him. The Holy Spirit was his standby, his counselor, his guide, his teacher, his truth, the Holy Spirit. And guess what? After he was an understudy, then he, that was, he got it. He got the Holy Spirit. Then he practiced it. What, he, what did he do first? Well, he had to develop the gift within him. He had to kill the lion and the bear. And then what did he do? Then he advanced it. How did he advance it? Then he was able to face his Goliath. And your Goliath will be your promotion, but you got to kill the lion and the bear first. That's right. And some of us were at that point. We're ready for Goliath. God's like, no, man, you need to go back. You still got a lion and a bear you got to take out. You got to pass the test. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Close your eyes, bow your heads. Father, I pray for each and every single one of us that we would have a desire, that we would have a hunger and a thirst for growth. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that as we finish this series here at the church level, that it doesn't finish in, our, in a personal level, that we would all challenge ourselves, Father, to grow, that we would invite you, Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, why don't you just repeat this prayer after me? Just say, Holy Spirit, I'm very aware, well aware of you. Forgive me for ignoring you. I repent for not inviting you in my decisions, in my leadership, for not allowing you to counsel me. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you today to help me. Help me in this life. In Jesus' name, I so, Father, I pray over every person. I pray over the peace of God. 
And I pray for those that are maybe sitting here today that don't know you, God. Those that maybe feel like quitting in life. Those that maybe feel empty, lost, lonely. Those that have never experienced a true relationship, not religion, but a relationship with you, Jesus. I pray for those people right now sitting in this congregation. If that's you, you're sitting out there and you're saying, I want to know this Jesus the way you present him. I want to know this, this, this God who loved me and who loves me and who forgives me and who wants the best for me. You see, God loved you and I so much that he was willing to sacrifice what he loved, his son Jesus. See, in order for us to be forgiven of our sins, there had to be an atonement for that sin. There had to be a sacrifice. There had to be a lamb. Blood had to be shed, and so he gave his son, Jesus. And Jesus, he had all the ability. He had all the power to take your sin, past, present, future, to take the worst of the worst sin you can think of right now that maybe you've been involved in. There's only one who can forgive you for it, and his name is Jesus. If you're here and you're saying, Pastor, I've never never invited Jesus. I've never never asked Jesus to save my life, to save my soul. Well, why would he need to save your soul? Because here's the reality. You know what? Every single one of us will expire at some point in life. You're not going to live forever. Everyone here dies, but aren't you glad that we have a God who thought about not only the present, but he thought about your eternity. And it's only through his son, Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. And so if you're here and you've never invited Jesus Christ into your heart, and you want to invite this love, this God who wants to forgive you, but not only forgive you of your sins, but a God who wants to advance you, a God who wants to elevate you, a God who wants to show you how much worth you have to him. At the count of three, you'll lift your hand high in the air and then you put it back down. No big deal. You don't have to be embarrassed. This is your moment. You and God, every eye closed, every head bowed. This is you and God right now. When I count to three, you lift that hand high in the air and you can put it back down. Then we'll all pray together. It'll be the most powerful prayer you'll ever pray. Are you ready? One, you're not afraid. Two, come on, you know heaven has touched you today. If that's you, three, lift your hand high in the air. I see that. I see that. I see that. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. You put your hands on. I see that back there. Thank you. Thank you. If you didn't lift your hand, you're like, man, I was scared. I thought nobody would lift their hand. Well, guess what? People did. And that's okay because you know what? I want you to pray the prayer if you did not lift your hand. I want you to pray with us. Church, we can all pray this together as well. Let's do this, especially those that said yes today. I want Jesus. Pray this. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Forgive me of all my sins, every one of them. Today, it's a brand new day. I receive a new life in Christ. Thank you, Lord, for not giving up on me and loving me the way you have this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Very cool. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.